Everything taught in this series is intended for virtual aviation only. While I attempt to replicate real world procedures on my channel, and so do many of you, I am not a certified flight instructor. If you want to learn to fly in the real world, you must attend a flight training program with a certified flight instructor. This series will attempt to teach and replicate real world procedures, but is not a substitution for real world training with a certified flight instructor. You have been warned. Hello YouTube, Captain Mac here and welcome to episode 2 in Virtual Flight School. Now you may recall that the last episode covered ground markings and airport signs during the day and originally that video continued on into the night lighting portion. However, the video was quite long and after the suggestion from a good friend of mine, I determined to take his advice and split them in two. So with that in mind, when you get past this little introduction, uh, the video, uh, the way the video is going to kick off is going to sound a little strange because the original recording was done in conjunction with the um, daytime recording. And so I'm doing this right here after the fact. Um, so just keep that in mind as you press on into the video. Now, if the environment that you're looking at right now looks chaotic and confusing, don't worry yourself because this video is going to highlight for you all of the different types of airport lighting and help you to find your way around the airport at night. So I hope that you enjoy it, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alrighty folks, we're getting close to being done here. The last thing we need to talk about is airport lighting. And uh, just like we did with our ground markings and our signage, I want to start from the approach to the airport. So right now we're looking at runway 7 left into Phoenix. This is a precision ILS approach. And the lights that you're looking at right now, these blinking lights and whatnot, these are called the Mauser lights, which stands for Medium Intensity Approach Lighting System with Runway Alignment Indicator Lights. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Okay, so basically what you have, the approach lighting system here, is uh, it's a means of transition from uh, instrument flight to visual flight for landing. So if the weather was really bad and the ceiling was say a thousand feet, we can't see anything, these lights are there to uh, help guide us to the runway once we be get into a uh, get to an altitude where we can see. That's all it is. It's instrument to visual approach of the runway. Now, depending on the operational needs of the airfield, these lighting systems may be relatively simple like this one here or very complex. What we're looking at with the Mauser lights here is we're looking at sequenced flashing lights um, that run towards the runway along the center line. Then you've got the three bar uh, lights across here. And then you've got a few more lights leading up to the runway threshold, which is lit up in white. Okay, That's for a Mauser lighting system and a SALR, S-S-A-L-R. And S-S-A-L-R stands for Simplified Short Approach Lighting System with Runway Alignment Indicator. All right, so that's, that's the lighting system used here. Now, back over here in San Francisco on our approach to runway 28 right, we have what's called an ALSF2 approach lighting system, and that stands for Approach Lighting System with Sequenced Flashing Lights. So basically, there's up to 174 burning white lights that create a reference plane along with two rows of um, red red lights on the sides as you can see here my brain doesn't want to function right now <laughs> and uh, those help the pilot with their horizontal perception then there's up to 21 white lights that create a sequential strobing flash pattern I had to read that to remember it that rolls towards the runway and you can see that going right here okay and the whole point of this what's great about this system is the intensity of the lighting can be changed depending on the weather conditions to allow for um, uh, approaches in uh, nastier weather or, or lower visibility conditions. There's also an ALSF-1 lighting system 
which is an approach lighting system with sequ se sequenced flashing lights and it's used on category run one runways during instrument landing approaches and it's to align the aircraft with the center line of the runway and to establish vertical orientation. Okay, There are still more types of runway lighting out there. Now I think the ALSF2 lights look a little better here at MSP um, than they do over in uh, San Francisco. The ALSF1 lights are almost identical except instead of having the two red strips down both sides they're just going to have a row of red lights that are short of the threshold and then both of them have uh, the white lights that continue and I don't, it doesn't say how far but they continue for a little ways down the runway here. You can see also because this is a precision approach that <clears throat> excuse me that there are white runway lights running down the length both sides of the runway and then there's also runway center line lights as well. Now there apart from the ALSF and the Mauser Solar lighting systems there's an REIL lighting system which with a displaced threshold like we have here in Goodyear is going to look like this. So you've got the four green lights on either side of the runway threshold there are runway edge lights in Goodyear. There are no runway center line lights. And then on the displaced threshold portion of the runway, you've got red runway edge lights letting you know that you can't land there. There's also an MALSF lighting system and an ODALS or ODALS, which is omnidirectional flashing lighting system. <coughs> However, I have been unable to locate an airfield that has either one of those <laughs> so just know that there are a couple more lighting systems out there. Okay now it's time to talk about the last portion of our approach lighting system. Most of you have probably heard the term PAPI or PAPI lights and are somewhat familiar with them and we'll get to those in just a minute but what I want to talk about here first is the VASI approach lighting system which stands for uh, visual approach slope indicator. Now here's the deal and I'm going to read this because there's no way I could remember all this. Uh, VASI installations can consist of either 2, 4, 6, 12, or 16 light units arranged in bars referred to as near, middle, and far bars. Okay, The most common installation is going to be like we see here in Goodyear. It's going to be two bars. Okay, um, However, you could have, and we'll talk about what they mean here in a second, you could have the two bars, the three bar is pretty common, and then all the way up to 16 lights, which would be uh, 3, 3, 2, and 3, 3, 2. <laughs> and uh, the, the additional bars actually provide additional glide slope uh, visual feedback. So your traditional two bar setup like we have here is for a three degree glide slope and this is what you're going to see most common. Uh, the three bars are relatively common. I've seen them a few times. I've never seen a uh, 12 or a 16 bar setup. Now, how do these work? Well, they actually work very similar to the way the Pappy lights do. What you're looking at right now is the near bar is white and the far bar is red, and so we are actually on glide slope right now. If we go down a little bit, you'll see that all of them turn red. That means we're below the glide slope. And if we go up, they all turn white, and that means we're above the glide slope. It's pretty straightforward. So, uh, red and white, uh, let's see, what's the, there's a little ditty for it. Red and white, you're all right. Um, red on red, you're dead, and white on white, you're out of sight. <laughs> okay? But the, the long and short of it is, is you want two red and two white lights. Now in the real world the way these work is they work based on the angle that you're looking at the lights from. I don't know how they set it up in the simulator so that uh, they change uh, colors appropriately. I can tell you that sometimes they're off by a little bit. You might, uh, you know, you might be here and it says you're below glide slope and you fly in and, and you're perfect for touchdown or you know every time you get close to the runway they all turn white all of a sudden which doesn't happen in real life if you remain on glide slope and so on and so forth um, well it does happen as you get closer to them but again the idea here is that the lights change color based on your your angle of how you're looking at them so if you were standing on the ground looking at them you would only see red lights because you're not high enough to see the white lights and that's that's how these work now pappy lights they really work the same way 
Now just so we're clear, even though the lights essentially work the same way as far as the angle and stuff, it doesn't mean they're the exact same thing. With your VASI lighting system, the lights are visible from 3 to 5 miles during the day and up to 20 miles or more at night. The visual glide path of the VASI provides safe obstruction clearance within plus or minus 10 degrees of the extended runway center line and up to 4 nautical miles from the runway threshold. That's for your VASI lighting system. Now your PAPI lighting system, which is the Precision Approach Path Indicator, all right, that's what PAPI stands for. They are visible from about 5 miles during the day and up to 20 miles at night. The visual glide path of the PAPI typically provides safe obstruction clearance within plus or minus 10 degrees of the extended runway center line and out to 3.4 nautical miles from the runway threshold. All right? In both cases, you shouldn't use the visual descent indication of the lights. In other words, I'm on glide slope until I'm aligned with the runway center line. Okay? As far as, so really the big difference there being that the VASI lights uh, provide the um, obstruction clearance along the center line of the runway out to 4 nautical miles. PAPI lights, it's out to 3.4 nautical miles. Apart from that, they really do function the same. Uh, you've got two white and two red lights. Sometimes you'll have configurations on both sides of the runway. Usually when you have parallel runways like this, you won't so that there's no... Um, confusion as to which PAPI lights you're looking at. Believe it or not, just because these runways are parallel to each other doesn't mean that their glide slope is exactly the same. It's relatively close for these two runways uh, and that's why you see red and white on both. But if you've got uh, two white and two red you're good. Now if you've got four white you're too high. If you've got three white that means you're a little high but you're still good. And then if you've got three red it means you're just below the glide slope um, there's no guarantee that you're going to have obstruction clearance. And then if you have four red, then you're obviously below the glide slope, too low, and there's no and and you probably won't have obstruction clearance. Now flying in here to San Francisco, unless you're, you know, way down here, you probably have obstruction clearance because there's nothing below you but ocean. But when you're flying into an airport like say in Denver or something like that, there are rising hills and trees and stuff like that out there that can get in your way. So all of that combined, your uh, approach lights and your PAPI or your VASI lights, that constitutes the approach lighting system for the airport. Now as we come up to our high speed exit here, you see that we have alternating green and yellow lights. Now, the alternating green and yellow is only going to occur during the exit portion of the runway. You can see that it's the same here for our standard runway exit as well. Now, not all airports are going to include taxiway centerline lighting, and all airports that do include taxiway centerline lighting are not necessarily going to have the alternating yellow and green lighting coming off the runway. But if they do, as you can see here, once you are clear of the runway, which we are officially clear of the runway when our entire aircraft has crossed the hold short line, then you can see that all of the taxiway centerline lights are green, and they will be green throughout the entire airfield. The only place where you'll see yellow centerway or uh, taxiway centerline lights is when you're on the exit portion of the runway. Now, in addition to the centerline lighting, which is usually going to, it's either going to be right on the center line or just to the side of it. You'll also have taxiway edge lighting. Now taxiway edge lighting is not necessarily going to be right at the edge of the taxiway. Uh, it's not there to indicate that this is the solid edge of the taxiway, but rather just to let you know that this in this vicinity right over here is the edge of the taxiway. So that's why you see that they're set back a little bit and taxiway edge lighting is always going to be blue. Now here in San Francisco looking back at the runway we're looking at our hold short line right here for runway <coughs> there we go for runway 10 right and 28 left <coughs> goodness can't clear my throat and you can see that on the left and right side of the hold short line is a blinking yellow light this light is to indicate that this is the hold short line or an entrance to the runway. I would also like to note that these little lights that are shooting up into the air, those don't exist in real life. That's just a weird P3D thing. Now, 
Some airfields, like here in Phoenix, will employ flashing lights in the ground rather than just on the edge of the whole short line. And so these lights, they don't all flash at the same time. You can see they're alternating their flashing sequence. And uh, having worked at Phoenix for many years, I can tell you that at night, these things are very, very clear. It's easy to see. You can even see them during the day. They don't show up quite as well in the simulator. Uh, if we go up a little higher here, we can still see them pretty good. And here again, the lights don't shoot up out of the ground like that. <laughs> but you can clearly see uh, the lights flashing along the hold short line here. And so that's the nighttime marking in Phoenix to hold short of the runway. You can also see that our taxiway signs are lit up. This is the same at all airfields. Uh, the taxiway indication is still the same. This is Echo 3 as we can see here and then runway 7 left. Again, it's only showing 7 left because we're all the way at the end of the runway. So even though technically 25 right is on this side, since we're all the way down on this end of the runway, it's only going to show a 7 left on the sign. You can also see that the taxiway edgeway lighting or taxi edge lighting is blue here as well it's blue everywhere where it's employed um, and it's offset from the edge of the taxiway a little bit and then our center line taxiway lighting is green as well although the green is a little different shade than it is over in San Francisco now you can see here in Goodyear that there's edgeway taxi edgeway lighting which is blue of course but there is no taxiway center line lighting uh, and that it, that's pretty common. Also, you note that uh, the blue lighting is it's real generic looking because this is a uh, default airport. This is most likely the kind of lighting you're going to see uh, at some of the larger default airports. You may have center line lighting, but I wouldn't count on it. Uh, now, I want to talk real quick about this guy right here. This is your uh, rotating beacon. It's called an airport or a heliport beacon now there's a lot of stuff I could go into about this but I'm not gonna get real in-depth what I'm gonna tell you is this there's different color combinations that mean different things a white and a green light like you see here means a lighted land based airport um, a white and a yellow light means a lighted water based airport and then a green a yellow and a white light all three would mean a lighted heliport now also military airports will have beacons that flash white and green but they're different from civil airports uh, because they use two quick flashes rather than a single flash so this beacon is rotating sometimes they don't rotate they just have different color lights in there and they flash at set intervals and there's a certain amount so it's 24 to 30 per minute for beacons that mark airports landmarks and points on federal airways I've never actually seen any on Federal Airways, just seen them on airports. And then it's 30 to 45 per minute for beacons that mark heliports. Now you're not going to really use these much in your flight simulation, but because we're staring at one, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about it really quick. Now the last bit of lighting that I want to talk about is the red lights you see at the non-approach end or departure end of the runway. Now these are supposed to go out to a thousand feet which would actually be right about the middle of these two here. Uh, but they're relatively close here and all they are is their red lights indicating that you're coming up to the end of the runway and then the departure and threshold is going to have a bar of red lights across now this isn't going to be in place at every single airfield you go to but most airfields especially if they have runway edge lighting and threshold lighting they're going to have a system similar to this and this again just lets you know that you're coming up to the end of the runway and now this environment shouldn't look so confusing to you anymore. In fact, it's actually pretty easy to find your way around the airfield at night as long as you know what all the different markings mean and you have a pretty good idea of where you're going. Now, big special thanks to my friend Joe who suggested that I split these two uh, portions into two videos. I think it was the right way to go. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. If you haven't already taken the opportunity to do so, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button. We're at about 8,500 subscribers right now, and I'd like to get up to 10,000 by the end of the year, and maybe we'll do some type of giveaway if we do. Also, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. That lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you didn't enjoy it and you want to give it a thumbs down, feel free to do so. But if you do, I'd appreciate some type of kind, but uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, constructive there we go kind but constructive criticism down in the comments so that I can make improvements for my videos in the future 
that's it. That's all and no more, folks. Until next time, as always, keep the blue side up unless otherwise instructed by ATC. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.